All right, so may I start? Can you hear me? Hear me? All right, let me start. The... All right, so in this workshop, we're going to do Slack app development from the beginning to the end. And now we're going to use a project template for it. So please go to the GitHub repository and download the project here. Or you can import this project to glitch.com like this or Code Sandbox and any other platforms. So if you're interested in building this app together, yeah, let's do it together. All right, just a moment. So in this workshop, we're gonna build a help this workflow app from scratch. Um, just a moment. So here's the video. Let's see the, how the app actually works. All right, so we're gonna use global shortcut from the shortcut menu. The click the shortcut here and open the model. This is a step one model and the select category and this is a request for laptop. And I go back to the step one and the select the category again. This is a mobile device replacement request. And the select mobile device. And the links. And the, the submission has a custom validation. And the submit again. The data accepted and the notification will be sent to the channel. And also the submitter will receive the notification in our direct message. And also the approver got the request, uh, the notification in the direct message, that the request that need your approval for the request. So that's the app. And also we're gonna use the home tab that is a relatively new feature. So the home tab shows the list of history of the submissions by the request. All right, so that's the app we're gonna build. All right, good, thank you very much. And what we're gonna do next is, uh, is that. All right, so that's the application we're gonna build. So we're gonna use shortcut and model and the model will be dynamic. And we're gonna have a uh, custom validation rules. And after the submission, we will send a notification to the channels and direct messages. And also we're gonna update home tab. Right, to build this app, we're gonna use um, several key platform features. They are Blockit, Global Shortcut, and Models. The Blockit is a Slack's UI framework for building rich and interactive user, user interface. The Blockit is, a, a, from Slack app developer perspective, Blockit is, a, is a just kind of JSON data structure to comply with. So as long as your messages and models uh, uh, use the valid JSON data structure, uh, Slack properly renders those data, those data in a desktop and the mobile applications. So this means just not only the expressiveness and easiness to use, but also uh, with Brockit, uh, your application can be OS platform or environment agnostic. So that's a huge benefit to build applications for, particularly for mobile applications, mobile use cases. The next one is Global Shortcut. Global Shortcut is a quick and easy way to start the workflow or not only workflow, but also any other operations in Slack that you can access uh, Global Shortcut from anywhere in Slack. And particularly, uh, specifically, the, you can access Global Shortcut from the shortcut menu in a text composer at the bottom of Slack, or you can search uh, workflow build, no, uh, Global Shortcut from the search bar by typing some keywords there. 
And the global shortcut is a very quick and easy way. It's a very handy way. But not only that, it's really friendly for everyone. So some people may feel like the slash command is, is something for engineers, but uh, but the shortcut is quite easy to understand how to use it. As you see, uh, the common way or common pattern to handle global shortcut invocation is to open the model. Model is a popover window in Slack, and we build models with BrockKit components. Uh, we use BrockKit no, models uh, for collecting user inputs or just to display dense information that is specific to users in an organized way. And also not only the block kit, but also that we can have multiple steps in you know, order flow. So it's a very powerful way to construct the build or use uh, interactive user uh, experience. All right, so those are the features we're gonna use. In addition to those, uh, we're gonna uh, do a little bit with uh, more, a home tab as well. All right, so how to build this app? We're gonna use framework, which is a bot for JavaScript. Both for JavaScript is a framework that is optimized for uh, building Slack apps. Particularly, uh, both for JavaScript and both framework uh, makes uh, the develop Slack app development uh, utilizing interactivity features and event subscriptions pretty much easier. And not only that, with both, you don't need to worry about uh, some non-functional requirement uh, in, in Slack apps. For example, when we build Slack apps, uh, it's highly recommended to uh, verify every single request from Slack platform uh, for mainly for security, because your API endpoint for Slack apps need to be exposed to the internet. So this means, of course, Slack re send requests to the endpoint, but not only Slack platform, but also any other random clients may try to send requests to the endpoint. So it's very critical, crucial to distinguish Slack's requests from any others for avoiding unexpected circumstances. And another benefit by Bolt is uh, you can rely on Bolt to pass in the variety of payloads. And uh, for historical reasons, uh, the data structure of the payload from Slack uh, are a bit different among the features like slash command, interactivity features, and event subscriptions, events API. They have a little bit different structure. So dealing with such differences may require additional uh, extra efforts but uh, with both, you don't need to do that. And uh, similarly, uh, dispatching request uh, to the right code path, uh, specifically the dispatching request to um, listener functions uh, may require uh, some code, but uh, both provides a kind of routing feature, which is quite similar to ExpressJS or kind of common web frameworks. So your your code could, could be really be very, similar, uh, very simple and concise with both the routing feature. And other few things uh, also will be handled by Bolt. So Bolt takes a lot, takes care of a lot of things. So with Bolt, your Slack app development uh, can be uh, even much more productive. And also you can easily create the secure and safe Slack apps. All right, so that's the overview of uh, the workshop. So go to the GitHub repository. This is a repository. I posted a URL in the chat box and the download the project and the start coding together. Right. First off, we're gonna create a project template, right? So we can get cloned or repository first, right? And go to the project. And the first thing we need to verify is please make sure your Node.js version, because both supports only 10, 13, or higher. So if you're using the older version, you need to upgrade the version. Now after that. Um, you can install the dependencies. Right, succeeded. And uh, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code for coding. So open the project with the editor. And in this project, we're going to mainly edit and modify the index.js on the source directory. And this is uh, still kind of the template and the boilerplate. But we're going to add the features in this source code. And the source code has so many uh, comments already. Yeah, there are instructions to follow. So we are going to do these things one by one. All right. And also, the same contents is available on the readme file. So it is fine, but we're going to go with this. Okay. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, we need to create a new, brand new Slack app. 
And to do this, we're going to go to apislock.com slash apps. So open the browser. I already opened this one. So this is the URL. Uh, all right. And I don't have any apps yet. So this is my first ever app here. And I click this button. And we're going to create app, the name it, the help desk app. Help desk app, right. And choose a workspace to use. So this development Slack workspace is uh, the owner of the app. So as long as you use this app only for this app, uh, this workspace, uh, you, didn't, you don't need to implement the standard auth flow um, uh, for the installing the app. So you can easily en enable this app to in this work workspace without implementing this, such kind of little bit complex uh, auth pro uh, instead of that the slack provides in a very simple simplified way to enable this application in a specific workspace right so to create the app there we got the success message a little bit slow but oh right anyway so we got a new application and this is a brand new app so we're gonna configure this app before installing this app they go back to the source code what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to set permissions. We need we need four, these four permissions. So we're gonna set these scopes as all permissions. And to do this, we're gonna go to Auth and Permissions page. So this one, and click this link, and this is Auth and Permissions. And the scroll down a little bit to the scopes, and we're gonna use bot token scopes. Uh, there are two types of scopes: the bot token scopes and the user token scopes. The bot token scopes are the permissions to act as a bot user in a workspace. So we're going to use only bot token scopes in this workshop. And also, for most cases, we will be using only these types of scopes. But if your application really need to do something on behalf of individual users, you can also request the permission to do so. So like, we need a request to access, we need a permission to access your uh, the personal data or personal permissions. Right, but now we're gonna use only this one and click this link first. And, uh, first off, we're gonna add the commands permission. Uh, the command is a permission to add new shortcuts or slash commands uh, to the workspace. Now we're gonna use global shortcut. And uh, to enable a new global shortcut in a workspace, uh, this permission is required. The second is uh, chat right. Uh, this is very, very basic feature of Slack. So with this permission, uh, bot users can post a message in a channel or direct message, right? Then third one is chat right public. Chat right public uh, is a permission to post a to allow uh, bot users to post a message without joining the public channels. So as long as the channel is a public, uh, bot users can uh, post a message without joining the channel. So otherwise, uh, you need to invite a bot user to the channel, or the bot user should have the permission to join the channel itself. And lastly, we're gonna use I am right permission as well. Uh, this is a permission to uh, start a new direct message with people in a channel uh, in a workspace. So in this application, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna start direct message with the submitter or requester and also approver. So for those situations, we need sometimes we start a new direct message with people. Right, so we add the four permissions here: the commands, the chat right, and the chat right public, and the I am right. And uh, before installing this application, uh, let's see how to configure your bot user. Uh, so here is the uh, configuration about bot user. So if you prefer uh, always online bot user, turn on this feature, this toggle. And also, if you have, if you like to name the bot user more like the bot user, um, you can rename this. This is the default name set by, uh, set from uh, the Slack app name, but uh, this is more like the bot ish name. All right. And uh, we're gonna use home tab, so it is turn off by default. So turn on the features. Page and click this button. 
And uh, this is a uh, the auth confirmation page. Uh, this page tells us that this application is going to use this permission in your workspace. And the four permissions we've configured in our admin page. So this is a chat right, and this is a chat right dot public, and this is I am right, and this is um, um, commands right. Yeah, no problem with them. So click safely click allow button here. All right, uh, we got a success message here, and the application has been installed to the development Slack workspace. And also, we got uh, both user auth access token. We're going to use this token for web API calls. So we will be uh, set this value to uh, the env environment variables uh, in a, to for the both application later. So go back to the index.js and uh, we go to api slash apps and create a new Slack app and configure the permissions and change a little bit about bot user and install the app. And then now we get the bot user token. The next step is uh, set those uh, credentials to this uh, bot application. So the first thing is bot Slack, the Slack bot token. This is a uh, bot user's access token to call web, API, call, call web, web APIs. So copy the value, but uh, here is this sample file. So copy and rename it. The dot m file, we're gonna use this one. Or well, you can set the value to the environment variables. It is fine. And I copy this value and set the value as slack underscore bot underscore token. That is a default uh, uh, environment variable name in a uh, bot application. So you can go with another other name if you prefer this. All right, so another one we need to configure is signing secret. to verify the signature in a request from Slack. So uh, we can access the value in a basic information page and scroll down a little bit to up credentials. And here's the signing secret. And the click show button and the copy the value here. And the paste this and the save in a .m file. Right, so we've configured two things. So this is a configuration for single workspace app, but if you, like to make this application distribute uh, installable in your other workspaces, uh, you can implement the auth flow. So it's not so complex with Bolt because Bolt uh, supports the built in feature to implement the, the workflow, you no, know, auth flow very easy. So please check the documentation for details. But anyway, now we're going to use a uh, single uh, work, workspace uh, app configuration now. And this is the initialization of the Bolt app. And the app instance is a kind of abstraction of Slack app. So it's only the, this instance has only essential parts of the bot application, uh, Slack applications. And this instance also provides, <coughs> excuse me, um, the ways to register middleware and listener functions. Middleware is a kind of common uh, functionality to, that will be applied to every single uh, request handling. And the listener function will be a specific code will, that will be executed when we receive a uh, uh, request that matches. Uh, conditions. And also the app instance has a start method. Start method starts a new web server process on the local host. So we're going to use those things here. And here is the utility I prepared. So this starts uh, the registration of middleware. So this is a global middleware that prints the context object and also the payload from the in our pre-tried format. So it's pretty easy to see what is happening with this port application with this middleware, but we don't recommend that turn on this uh, middleware in the production. All right, so what we're gonna do is let's start the application on local host. So we're gonna use local, the script named as local. So we have start, met, start script and also local script. This does only kind of running the normal, the normal watches the file changes and the reflect the changes to the live app automatically. All right, so start the app, npm run local. And the application started and we don't see any errors in the console, this is successful. And what we're gonna do next is uh, 
creating global shortcut and then configure a global shortcut listener in a bot application. So go back to uh, the Slack app configuration and, and go to interactivity and shortcuts. So the interactivity feature is not enabled by default. So the first thing we gonna do is turn on the feature. And after that, we're gonna configure request URL and we're gonna add the new global shortcut. Request URL is a public endpoint that is nature performs Slack. Now, in this workshop, we're gonna use Englock. This is very uh, useful to, to uh, build, uh, start a new uh, public endpoint that forwards request to the local process. So we're gonna use exactly the same command here so if you don't have this software, you can download from this download page. And I've already installed this application, so we're gonna use englock this way. So just the command is englock http 3000. All right, and to start it. And the englock uh, randomly chosen uh, the subdomain. So this is the URL I can use now. So the copy the URL, the copy the domain and the paste it, but uh, this is not complete. We're gonna have uh, the default path set by both framework, that is slash, slack, slash events. We can uh, go with another path, but uh, this is the default one. So we said slack, uh, slash, slack, slash events. All right, and if you want to verify it is really working, you can do this like, okay, so curl command, let's send in a HTTP request using curl command, and you, if you see the 400 run, this means uh, the both application handled the request and, and intentionally returned this HTTP status. And also you will see uh, the warning log here. And also in a uh, Angular console, you will see uh, the request log here. All right, so it is working now. And what we are gonna do next is uh, the global shortcut. And click this button, and uh, there are two types of shortcuts, uh, the global shortcut and the message shortcut. And we're gonna use global shortcut, but message shortcut is a part of the message menu in a Slack channel. And when an end user click a shortcut in a message menu, a Slack platform sends the information about a specific message to your endpoint, and your endpoint can do something with the specified message, like the bookmark features or other things. But now we're gonna use global shortcut. And we're gonna configure these things. The name is user facing, so help desk request. And I'll create a new help desk request. And the callback ID will be included. Will be included in a payload. So we're gonna, and also we're gonna specify the value string value in a source code. So use the correct name here. So we're gonna use new help desk request and the create. So we, we turn on the feature and set request URL and add global shortcut. And don't forget to click the save changes button here. Uh, as we already uh, granted the commands permission to the application, so you don't need to reinstall the app to turn up uh, to enable this shortcut. The shortcut will be automatically uh, added to the workspace. So this is the workspace we're gonna use and let's see uh, the shortcut is already available. So you can access shortcut from the shortcut menu here and click this and now we have shortcut here. So what we do here is we go to the configuration page and uh, configure the interactivity feature and add the global shortcut. So let's run this shortcut. When we click this, we got request like this but uh, we didn't respond to it. So in the UI, it says, sorry, that didn't work, try again. So this means the request to the endpoint are timed out. And this doesn't re respond to any HTTP status code. And also in the console log or the bot application says, uh, an incoming event was not acknowledged within three seconds. So this means uh, that three seconds within, acknowledging in three seconds is a requirement by Slack. So you need to acknowledge a request within three seconds when we receive requests from Slack. So we got a request 
this one. So the shortcut type request, and we got some information about this is workspace information, and this is uh, user information who started the global shortcut operation. And so, uh, but uh, the acknowledging in three seconds doesn't mean you need to complete everything with, within three seconds. Uh, just returning 200 OK within three seconds, after that, you can do anything asynchronously. So, so to implement this, go back to the source code, we're going to use uh, listener functions. So we can use app instance to register a new uh, listener function, and we're going to use shortcut method for it. And then uh, shortcut method takes arguments. As, uh, first one is uh, callback ID. So callback ID is this one, and a string value or regular expressions. And the listener function is async function. All right. All right. And the listener function takes a one JavaScript object as an argument. So, and the, the JavaScript object has some attributes like this. But this is this is totally fine. But a common way to use uh, listener function would be like this: so extracting specific field from the JavaScript object. So it is fine, but uh, yeah, you you go you can go with the prefer way you, the the way you prefer. And okay, we're gonna do two things in a listener. The first one is acknowledge a request, anyways, and uh, we're gonna open the model. So to acknowledge a request, we can use we can use a uh, arc method. I thought, okay, arc. Right. The arc method is an async function. It returns promise. So let's have a wait. And this returns a 200 OK to the request immediately. Now, after that, we can open the model. So op to open the model, we can use uh, build open API method. And to call web APIs, we use uh, web API client. You can access web client by client, and it has a method with the same name, so views open. And the views open takes uh, three arguments. The data uh, access token and the trigger ID and uh, view, view is a model, definition of the model view. But uh, uh, this, this client already embodies, uh, now internally holds this uh, token, or this one, yeah. This bot token, so you don't need to uh, give a token here explicitly, but uh, you, you can give overwrite. You can overwrite the token if you have other tokens in the case. But so we're gonna use trigger. We're gonna have trigger ID and the view here only. And the trigger ID is a, a short-lived pointer to uh, the user's active action. So when a user takes some active actions like a clicking button or select item from select menu or kind of starting slash command or start uh, running slash command or shortcut. Uh, in that case, a uh, Slack platform generates a trigger ID for it and send the trigger ID to your endpoint. The trigger ID is required to start a new open, a uh, new model process. So, and we can access the data in the payload. The payload, we can access payload as body. The body has these attributes. And at the top level, we have trigger ID here so it's, it's short-lived, so we cannot use, you cannot store uh, those data for um, or for a long time. It's a kind of one-shot value to use. All right, so access body and trig ID here. And the view object, it's a JSON data. So here's uh, some examples under the models. We have examples. The step one JSON is the JSON data uh, to define the model interface. So go to the the bear mentioned that uh, we have Brocket Builder. This is really useful to, to preview uh, how the block, your root blocks looks like in Slack. So you can access with your browser in your browser and you can cut and paste the JSON data here and uh, they'll be rendered this way. So we're gonna have very simple model as a step one, uh, just for the category selection. Then this is a JavaScript code. We can, so we just, we just can, Cut and paste the source code, uh, the JavaScript object to the source code directly. Right. And also, this method is an also async function. So let's have a wait before checking how it works. Right. So go back to Slack workspace and try 
uh, shortcut again. All right, so we got the model here, and also we return 200 OK to it. All right, it is working now. So what we did here is we added a global shortcut listener. And in that listener, we acknowledge the request with ACK method. And after that, we open the model uh, using views open method. All right, so this is the very beginning of the development. The next step is the handling the item selection from the select menu. So there are three categories that I'd like to submit request about my laptop, the click this one, and we got the request this way, but uh, it timed out because we don't have any listeners for it. And uh, here is the error in indicator. And also, yeah, we didn't respond to it. All right, and this is a kind of user action um, event. And the user action, to handle user action event, we can use action method. Action method takes uh, action ID and listener function. The action ID is a unique ID about the user action. And go to the step one model. So the step one model has uh, the callback ID. This is a model's unique identifier. And the model has a blocks. This is a array of block. Block is a, a blocked component. And we use two, we have two blocks here. The first one is a selection to display text information. The second one is actions. It's a collection of the buttons or select menus. And we have the static select menu here, and this has this unique ID. So we're going to handle this uh, action IDs event. All right. So set this. And we are going to, uh, all right. So what we're going to do is uh, handling the action event and acknowledge the request first. And after that, we're going to update the existing model. So this is existing model. So we're going to update this. So to do this, OK, so first step is exactly the same. We just await, uh, await uh, so acknowledge the request. And the next thing is we're going to use client again. And views update method will be used for updating existing model. And the parameters arguments are uh, the first one is view ID. View ID is the existing views ID. And the next one is hash. Hash is a random value to detect uh, the uh, less conditions among simultaneous requests from uh, the same user. And lastly, view updated view. View ID is a unique identifier of the view. And so here's the payload. This is the body. And under the body, we have view. The view has its ID, and also we, it has a hash here. It may be, the text may be a little bit small, but yeah, all right. So this is a hash. Uh, all right, just a moment. So what we're going to do is use body view ID and body view hash. The updated model. So we're going to use three types of new uh, step to models, but uh, just to make sure it working, it is working. So we're going to use a static one. So this is a static example for mobile device request. So just cut and paste this one. There we go. And I forgot to have a wait here. All right. So I'll go back to workspace and I'll select item. The model has been uh, updated immediately. So it is working as, ex as, ex as expected. So what we what we did here is we added the action handler, action, sorry, action listener, and acknowledge the request and update uh, the model. But this is not a complete version. So allow me to cut and paste the solution. So the solution is uh, this one. So the complete version uh, dispatches the the operation, the, the code uh, to corresponding in, corre in correspondence, co correspondence with the, ca the chosen category, so laptop, mobile, other. All right. And uh, right. So uh, it works. 
So I chose cut laptop and the laptop replacement. All right, so all good so far. So the remaining tasks is creating, uh, implementing the back button and the data submission and uh, the other operations after the submission. So back button is quite similar to the current one, the, the one we implemented. So this is also action. So click this, send the action request. And this is the another action ID. So help desk model reset. So to implement this, the implementing this is quite similar to the previous one. So allow me to cut and paste. So this is the complete code. So the action listener uh, acknowledge the request first and update uh, the view again with the uh, step one model. Right, so click it. Now we go back to the step one and it is working as expected. Good. So what we did here is the exactly same with the previous one, the registered uh, action, action listener and acknowledge the request and the updated model with API call. And when we submit this data, the, similar, the same thing happening. So we don't have listeners for it. So it timed out and the Slack shows a general error message saying we had some trouble connecting, I'll try again. So this means the time timeout errors. And the behavior is exactly the same, but we didn't respond to it. So what we're gonna do is implementing view submission handler. And this request is, the type is uh, this one. So view submission, and the view submission has information about the submission data. And specifically under the view, uh, we have submitted data here. So view state values under the dot, uh, we have two fields here. So this is corresponding to this, these two input fields. All right, so go to the solution JS and here's the complete source code, but before checking this, the, what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna implement the view submission listener and uh, we're gonna extract these values from the payload and we're gonna apply some input validations to the, some fields. And if everything is okay, we can safely close the model. After that, probably we can do something meaningful like storing the data to the database or coding external services to register tickets or something like that. And also we can send notification to the people concerned. And uh, we're gonna update home tab as well. Right, so here's the solution for it. So we're gonna, register uh, view submission handler by using view method. And the view method uh, takes, a, this is a callback ID. Callback ID is a unique identifier of the model. Model has callback ID here, and we're gonna dispatch. We're gonna handle uh, the callback ID here and uh, extract the value. So as I mentioned, we have request the body and it has view, the view, under the view, state values. The values has block ID and action ID as a key of the nested data structure. So we can access those uh, submitted data this way. So value has block ID title, and if it exists, we extract the value as value if the value is the simple text object, text input. But uh, if the input block is uh, the static select uh, or any other select menu items, uh, components, uh, uh, we have the selected option, under the select, selected options, uh, we have the label and its underlying value. So it depends on the types of the, the input blocks. After that, we have very simple validation logic. So just it's a, it's a very you know, straightforward JavaScript code. So if title exists, we check the length of it. If the length is too short, we can uh, associate error message to the block ID. So uh, this error object has block ID. The block ID has only one error message to display. And that's the same for due date. Due date is not in the future. Uh, we can put error message to the uh, user interface. And if we have at least one error, uh, we return this response data. So this is really important to display 
uh, this is the way to display uh, error message in our model. So we have action, I oh, sorry, response action, and this is errors. Other patterns are kind of push and update and clear. So please refer to the document for details. And in the case of errors, we have error message, uh, error, errors object uh, at the top level. And otherwise, all are good. So in that case, we are done with uh, this model. So we can safely close this model to tell this just returning the empty string to em so empty body to Slack server. And uh, after that, we're gonna do something here like storing data and also sending message. So here is a very general, the simple text message to display the submitted data. And also I have uh, the first line for uh, each uh, recipient. So we're gonna send three types of notifications. The first one is the notifications to the public channel. There's a help desk team's channel. So triage help desk, right? And we're gonna send this message. So we got a new request. We need to, to triage this. And the second one is uh, the notification to the requester. So thank you very much for the submission. I will be updating you quickly or shortly. And lastly, we're gonna, if if the submission requires an approval from someone else, we can send a notification to the, the approver. And lastly, we're gonna update home tabs. The home tab is a personal space in the Slack. And, and the home tabs view uh, is per user in the workspace. So every single person has different home tab. So in this case, we're gonna update uh, the submitter requester's home tab with the all history of the submission of the person. Right, so this is the complete version of the peer submission here. So try this one. Right, so let me, a little bit short title in there. Submit again. Right, so the custom validation is working here. So I'm gonna go with this longer one. Right, submit the data. And now we got the message in a public channel, so new request here. And also as a submitter, I got the DM from the bot user. And also home tab, I have only one submission right now. So let's try another one. I click this and select uh, mobile and iOS and approval will be report and as soon as possible. But this is also custom validation, so Friday. And submit it and accept it and we got the message again and also in the channel and also in Realforce Slack, this is the approvals Slack. The, also the person got a uh, message from the bot user. So we need your approval. All right, so that's the app we built. All right, so how did you go? So go back to the readme. Uh, okay. Uh, so what we did uh, in this workshop was, were the, so many things actually. So we created Slack app from scratch. So we created Slack app configuration at the configuration, the admin page first, and the configure uh, sufficient permissions to the app and install the app to the workspace. And after that, we created both app template, uh, we, both application on, my, on our local machine and configured two credentials, the bot user token and also a signing secret for request verification. And the started application, the 3000 port, the listened on 3000 3, port, and the, we forwarded request to the public endpoint uh, to the local process uh, using ngrok. And uh, we uh, implemented several listener functions, and then now it is working. So if you, oh, just a moment. Uh, All right, so thank you very much for joining this workshop. And if you have any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to post a message in a issue tracker of this sample project, or please reach out, uh, also reach out to me at any time in you know, this conference or any, anywhere, anywhere in our communities.
yeah, I really enjoyed this running. Uh, we really enjoyed running this workshop, and I hope this was helpful to you. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, right, so just a moment. So, right. So, do you have any questions? All right. So, uh, we still have three, no, five minutes. So, let me check your message here. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, recording will be shared publicly. Yeah, and the copy means like so. The on only material I have is a GitHub repository, so you can access this repository. All right, so to access the solution JS, that's a complete version. So how to implement that? The checking the source code will be the the best way to check. Uh, yeah, this one, right. All right, so that's all. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.